Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, I have brought back a handful, but not even all, of the resources that we dug out of that beacon strip mine that we made in yesterday's episode, or the days before's episode, because unfortunately this is a little bit delayed. But either way, I brought it all back here to my storage room, which is in the process of filling out, but this is a long project, it's a large build, and I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to put up here until now I've kind of figured out what I want to do and I've put in this really neat moss wall feature with some copper behind it and some leaves and moss in front of it I kind of like this it looks sort of modern and, and interesting and provides a little bit of light thanks to the lanterns around there I'm working on swapping out all of these torches for more permanent light fixtures and I feel like this up here is going to be more like a trophy room for the series it's going to be a place where I put items that are significant to the series maybe significant to some other community projects that we're going to do maybe my first wooden pickaxe the dragon egg stuff like that could go up here anything that I want to keep basically as a memento instead of it just getting lost in a storage system somewhere and around here I at least started off by putting out the banners that we made in the banner crafting episode because honestly I really like the look of them and I felt like they should be out on display somewhere. But today we're going to work on the fact that I now have nine shulker boxes on me full of resources and I don't really want to sort all of this stuff manually because yes I could just shift click it all into a chest but sometimes that's a bit of a pain and I want that to happen automatically in the background while I deal with other things. We're also going to kill two birds with one stone here because I haven't really had a decent way of inputting items into this automated storage system especially now that we've worked on the front of this building Previously, I was just running up to an area over here and then jump clicking to access a chest that would dump all of the supplies into this hopper chain, sort them into their relevant chests, and then dump everything else that wasn't automatically sorted down here in the basement. So today we're going to work on a system that's going to automatically unload all of the shelker boxes of resources that I bring back with me from other places. We can even use that system to drop off some resources if we've got them from, you know, stuff we're doing locally, the kind of stuff that I would just want to throw in that chest in the meantime. And on the other end of the system, down here, we're going to set up a system which is going to automatically load shulker boxes with all of the rest of the miscellaneous stuff that gets put in here, and that way I can take it around the storage system, just drop off a shulker box wherever I want, and sort all of the supplies from this into the relevant chests, and I think that's going to make my life generally quite a lot easier. <laughs> so this is naturally going to require a little bit of redstone, but the circuits involved in loading and unloading shulker boxes are actually pretty easy. There's something we can do with minimal redstone redstone components, and we're taking advantage of a couple of the mechanics of shulker boxes, which dictate that regardless of what kind of piston you're pushing it with, whether it's a sticky piston or a regular piston, if we put a shulker box in front of those and then power them with some redstone power, the shulker box actually gets broken and drops on the floor as an item with all of its contents intact. So I've still got all of the gravel and diorite and everything, it's not like messed with the shulker box's contents or anything like that. And what we're going to do is have a system where we put a shulker box down, all of the contents get drained out by a hopper, and when they are drained, a piston activates, breaks the shulker box, retracts again, and then a dispenser will actually place another shulker box in front of the piston. Because yes, shulker boxes can be placed by dispensers as well. It is one of their more useful properties because it allows for full automation like this. So we have a shulker box inside of the dispenser, we power that, bam, the dispenser places the shulker box, and incidentally, it won't try and place any other shulker boxes when one is placed in front of it. You'll notice in the subtitles there it says the dispenser failed because it was unable to place the second shulker box and it doesn't spit it out as an item afterwards, which is kind of useful when you're dealing with circuits like this. But then of course after that we can have the piston break it, retract that, and place another shulker box with the same dispenser. Although we do need to work out some differences in timings here because if the dispenser and the piston fire at the same time it's not going to be as successful as just placing a shulker box like so. And I think the smart thing for us to do here is to focus on the unloading system first, because that way, when we go down there and figure out the loading system, we'll be able to just dump all of our shulker boxes in here to unload, and we'll have some fresh, empty shulker boxes we can put into the other end of the system. To start off with, I am going to have to break away some of the floor here where I've been decorating a little bit. We're probably going to have to get rid of this wooden pillar and open this out, which is going to mean that a couple of blocks fall into the system, but no worries, they'll probably get sorted or end up in the overflow 
overflow. Now the way I have built this whole system, the input hopper is actually part of the wall there, and we ideally want to bring this out a couple of blocks so that we don't have to demolish the nice front face of this building in order to fit this shulker box unloader in. So we're going to break that chest, we're going to probably put a chain of hoppers coming up here, and I've got a few hoppers in my redstone box for just this purpose, and I think maybe over here, sort of level with the floor, that's where we're going to have the items input into the system. So then we can replace the logs in the pillar there, nothing to worry about, all of the items are still going to go through. And the other major thing we're going to need here will be an output chest, somewhere for the shulker boxes to go after they've been unloaded by the system. So we're going to break out a couple of blocks of the floor here, we're going to have a chest there and we're going to point another hopper into it like so. Now the redstone for this is going to be very simple, if we put a piston facing this way, then we put our shulker box on here, that's going to drain everything into the system, and once it's empty, the piston is going to fire, and it's going to eject the shulker box into this hopper here. Because the piston pushes across the front of this hopper, there is no chance that the shulker box is going to end up going into this hopper, it's going to go directly into this one, and the empty shulker boxes will be left in the chest. Behind this, we want to place a couple of blocks, and we're going to use the same blocks that we've ended up using for the floor, because right here, we need to have a redstone comparator, which is going to detect whether or not the shulker box has any contents to begin with. The comparator is going to go right here, and behind that we're going to place a sticky piston. The comparator is going to activate the sticky piston when this box has any contents. On top of the sticky piston, we're going to place an observer facing away from our redstone circuit, because the only thing that observer needs to detect is whether or not the piston has moved it, and it will do that because it will detect that it's looking at a different air block. We're going to grab a couple of distinct looking blocks to make sure that we know which parts of our redstone circuit are part of the circuit and not part of the floor, so I'm grabbing some polished andesite for that. We're going to put the polished andesite right here and right here, and that's going to conduct the redstone power to both the piston and the dispenser. The dispenser is going to face downwards above this hopper, making sure that it can dispense shulker boxes directly onto this spot, and we need to put one piece of redstone dust, which I'll need to break down from these redstone blocks, right there on top of the polished andesite, and that's really it. We can actually close this off now and make sure that the floor here is all filled up because we have completed our shulker box unloader. Now I still need to figure out where the wall is going to be, but I wanted to make sure we had our redstone circuitry in here first so that I could figure out the dimensions of that. But now loading this thing up is going to be pretty straightforward. We put all of our shulker boxes into the dispenser except one, and this one I'm actually going to remove some of the contents of. So we're going to dump all of the stacks of andesite into this chest and we're just going to leave one stack of granite remaining in the shulker box, but don't worry, this will work with a full shulker box as well, this is just so the demonstration is a little faster. Once we put our shulker box with one stack of granite in here, you'll notice the piston at the back is going to push the observer upwards. The hopper below is going to drain out all of the granite, and that's going to go down into our storage system, which we should see blinking over there where the granite filter is. Now, once this finishes draining, one of the shulker boxes in here is going to replace the shulker box that we've placed, and this should be shunted sideways by the piston and end up in this chest, which it should do any minute now once that stack of granite disappears, and there we go. We have a shulker box in there, and its contents are now draining. Our empty shulker box ends up in this chest. Now the problem we have at this stage is that dispensers always dispense a shulker box in the upright position. Regardless of what orientation you have the dispenser, this one is facing downwards, but if we had it facing sideways or upwards, it still places the shulker box in this orientation. If we place the shulker box on the side of a surface like so, then it can open sideways and we can see what the contents are, but unfortunately the way dispensers work, it will only ever place them vertically like this, so with a solid block on the top of it, it's impossible to see what the contents of this are. But take it from me, they are draining through the system, we've got some cobblestone running through there right now, that's all going to the cobblestone filter which is right there at the very beginning of our item filters, and slowly but surely the system will fill up with all of the supplies we brought over, which as you can see is quite a lot of cobblestone. Each time this shulker box is emptied, the comparator switches off because it no longer detects that the shulker box has any contents. When that happens, the piston deactivates, which pulls the observer down into this position here. This sends a redstone signal to this block, which both activates the piston using this redstone dust here, and activates the dispenser over the top of it by the redstone signal travelling through that block of polished andesite, which pushes the shulker box to one side and immediately places another one using the dispenser. And each time a shulker box is broken over here, this hopper should work fast enough to pick them up every single time, but on very rare occasions, sometimes Minecraft's random entity momentum that happens when something like this is broken will lead to the item entity flying out 
at a diagonal. If you are worried about that at all, which you don't really need to be because the hopper is always fast enough, you can always place blocks either side of this hopper just to make sure that the items are aligned and that they always go over the top of the hopper. But I really don't think that part is necessary. It's been very consistent when I've tested this in the past. And if you want to do the same thing over the top of here, naturally you're going to have to use a non-solid block like stairs so that you can access and open the chest underneath that's going to give you back all of your shulker boxes. Alternatively, you could thread another hopper underneath here and have the access chest be right there. So I'm now going to transfer all of the contents back to the shulker box that we took them out of to begin with, our little demo shulker box here. We're just going to throw that in the dispenser and that's going to unload all of its contents in time into our storage system. If we wanted to, of course, we could attach another hopper to the side of this dispenser and feed in more shulker boxes, even from a double chest or something like that. So you could have up to 54 shulker boxes all stored up in here, ready to go into the dispenser whenever it had any space. At that point, the only limitation really is going to be the available space in our storage system. And yeah, we're kind of going to tell today whether or not we have enough room for all of the cobblestone that I dug out of that strip mine. But either way, that's our shulker box unloader figured out. Now we're going to take care of the loading mechanism on the other side that's going to take care of the overflow items. Now this circuit down here is going to work a little bit differently and first of all I will explain why. The comparator circuit that we have up there is detecting whether or not the shulker box has any contents whatsoever, which makes perfect sense when we want to unload a shulker box. But when we want to load it, automatically breaking it doesn't always make sense because it's going to have a random assortment of miscellaneous items in here, depending on what we throw in here at the time. And it's not always possible for a comparator to detect that we've put everything we want to into a shulker box if the shulker box isn't completely full. Let's take, for example, our ore box over here, right? We've got a bunch of different items in here. It's almost completely full. There are multiple stacks of items in here, but there are still one or two stacks which only have one item in. And so when we measure the comparator output signal from here, if I throw down some redstone dust, you can see that this is emitting a power of 10. Even though almost every slot in our shulker box is full, it's not full all the way because the items don't always reach a full stack. And so we can't wait for this comparator to measure an output level of 15, the maximum it would do, because that's never going to happen, because we're never going to have 64 deep slate diamond ore come into this shulker box. Or if we do, it's going to take a while. We could use that kind of system to fill up something from a mob drops farm, for example, where we know that the shulker box is going to get full up of full stacks of items every single time it loads something. But we're not going to do that here because this overflow chest has like 15 or 16 of some items. It's got one or two of others. Basically, the whole thing is not going to get filled up with full stacks of items. So we can't unload it automatically. The solution to that is just to have any old items we want loading into the shulker box and to collect it manually. But we can still have a little bit of redstone in here to help us collect it manually and make that process a little bit more fun. So we're going to rearrange a little bit of the stuff here. We're still going to keep a chest in here as our storage buffer, and we could always make that a double chest by extending it that way, as long as there is one hopper used as an output here that's going to push all of the contents into the shulker box. So our shulker box is going to go here, and we do need to redirect some of the hoppers that I've got up here so that we can make sure all of the items end up going through here with room for our redstone mechanism. And just taking out that one hopper should have been enough yeah, that should work out fine. We need to put a sticky piston up here, and that's going to be what pushes the shulker box down, but we're going to place that one block away because we want to make sure that we can still open the shulker box to check the contents before it gets pushed out and into a storage chest. So in order to make sure we can still open this shulker box, we're going to have the piston push a slab down over the top of the shulker box, which actually fits perfectly. You can see that the shulker box's top there aligns with the slab. You can't do this with stairs, unfortunately, because even though you can open chests underneath stair blocks, which we can probably put one in here. You can open chests with stair blocks above them, but you can't do that with shulker boxes. For some reason, I think it's because the shulker box is a full block to begin with, where the chest actually occupies slightly less than a block, it won't let you open it. So we are going to have to use a slab for this one. Underneath this, however, we can place a stair and we can place a hopper underneath that feeding into an output chest, which means we're going to have to move our ender chest because unfortunately 
you can't output stuff via hopper into an ender chest. The reason you can't do that, by the way, is probably because of multiplayer servers. Like, if you imagine a hopper facing into an ender chest on a multiplayer server where lots of players are using the ender chest, how does the game know which player's ender chest it's putting those items into? It can't, really, so it's not really possible to do that in vanilla. But of course, a normal chest will work just fine. And if I break this out, we can take a quick look at how this is going to work. I'll use the redstone block here to activate the piston. The shulker box gets pushed, and it gets pushed down into the stair block. The hopper will pick it up through the stair block, and our shulker box has ended up in the chest here. Now we're going to put a dispenser back here, and the dispenser is going to be full of empty shulker boxes, so that as soon as we break the shulker box that's already here, the one that has all of the contents, it's going to replace this with an empty shulker box that can continue to fill up with items from our overflow system. And so at this point, we're going to break away some of the blocks back here, which are actually concealed on this side by our barrels here, so that we can access a bit more of the area back here to fit in some redstone machinery. Once again, this isn't going to take all that many components, though. It's going to be a relatively simple circuit. Next to the dispenser on the right hand side here, we're going to place an observer facing this way. So the output is towards us. We're going to break out these two blocks here so that we have access to the piston and directly above the dispenser, we're going to place an observer facing upwards so that the output is downwards into the dispenser. Then we're going to place two solid blocks for which we will use the stone bricks both here and here. We can use some stone to fill in the rest of this if we want to, but on the top here we're going to be placing a repeater over the top of this observer here, and you'll hear that click. We need to set the repeater to two ticks to make sure that it has enough time for the sticky piston here to push and retract that slab without it detaching from the front of the piston. We're going to place two pieces of redstone dust there and there. This should now activate the piston first and the dispenser second. In front of the observer, to activate this, we're going to be placing a note block. And note blocks are really cool for this because they're effectively just a redstone input that you can punch if you use them in tandem with an observer. If we place that there, you can see that the whole system activates for a second. But now if I right click on this to change the note of the note block, the observer detects that as a block state change and it's going to activate the circuit once, meaning that effectively we just come down here, we right click on this and the system activates. If you don't like the noises the note block is making while you do this, then that's a good thing because we're going to be putting a block over the top of that both to blend it in with the environment here and to make sure that the note block does not make any sound. However, you're still adjusting the pitch of the note block when you right click on it, which means the system is still going to activate as it did before. Below that, of course, we're going to place an inverted stair like so because we still need to access the chest which is going to output all of the shulker boxes. So now if we place our shulker box in here for it to receive any additional items that we want to put into it using the system, we can just hit this note block, the shulker box gets squished and oh okay, all right, we are going to have to place a slab here after all, I was worried about this. See I thought that the shulker box was going to be pushed down into the hitbox of the stairs, but I guess it's being broken instantly which means that if the stair block is like this and the shulker box lands on there, Technically still the hopper is still trying to pull it through a full block and it's not going to be able to do that Unfortunately, so instead we're just going to place a dark oak plank behind there We'll put another dark oak slab in front of that and now if we right click on the note block there You'll notice the shulker box seems to magically disappear But it ended up in the chest and there is a rare chance of it popping forward For example, if we break it a couple more times it might end up popping forward before it gets pulled down into that area with the hopper but this does seem pretty consistent actually. And if we come back up to the top of our storage system here, we should find that this has gone through two shulker boxes. Okay, so in the time that it's taken us to build that unloading system, we've emptied two shulker boxes into the rest of the system. And yeah, that's still loading cobblestone in, so it's gonna be doing that for a while. The idea now is that this dispenser at the back here can be filled up with empty shulker boxes. And once we're done with this full shulker box in here, we can right click on that. It's gonna place another shulker box in here, which we can still open to check whether or not it has contents and the other shulker box that we just dealt with ends up going in the chest so that we can take it around to the rest of the storage system and unload it. I think I'm going to keep this one here for now because there are a few of these components that we can put back upstairs in our storage system in the barrels above the relevant categories of material but overall I think that's going to be a really big quality of life change that's going to help me sorting some of this stuff later. Now, as I mentioned before, there is a way, if we want to, of detecting whether a shulker box has completely filled up, whether it's got 27 full stacks of items 
in its inventory and at that point have it be broken automatically and replaced with another shulker box. Let's say for example we wanted to do that here at our wool farm where the sheep have been sheared so often that it's getting to the point where this barrel is getting filled up and we could have shulker boxes here instead loading up with wool, ejecting them once they reach capacity and then reloading the system with another empty shulker box. There are a bunch of different ways you can configure systems like that but I'll demonstrate one here for you. You can place a chest for your output where all of the full shulker boxes are going to go, place a hopper right there and that's going to be the input hopper making sure all of the shulkers get into that chest. The shulker boxes are going to be placed here and this one isn't full so we're not going to use this one as a direct example even though it's going to go in the chest anyway but let's say for example ender pearls. We've got a bunch of ender pearls in this, we've got two other stacks of material but as long as these are all full stacks because ender pearls only stack to 16 and these two are 64s, a redstone comparator is going to read this as a full container and it's going to output a signal strength of 15. One of the functions of a comparator is to compare two different redstone signals coming in from two different sides, or in this case, comparing the contents of a container and the signal strength output relative to its contents to a signal that comes in from the side from, for example, a block of redstone. If I take the items out of this shulker box, you'll notice that the comparator switches off entirely, as though it's not reading the contents of this shulker box at all. It is still reading the contents of the shulker box, but it's comparing that to the signal strength of this item to one side of it. And in this case, the redstone block gives off a power level of 15. If I place another piece of redstone dust there, power 15. So the comparator reads that signal coming in from the side, compares it to the signal strength it's getting from the container, and if the signal coming in from the side is larger, it doesn't output any power at all. You can use this for a variety of different things, but in this case, we're going to make sure that the comparator only activates when the shulker box is full. And when it is, you'll notice that the comparator lights up again because the signal strengths are equal and it can output that power on that side. If we didn't have this redstone block here, then the comparator would output power regardless of how much was in the shulker box. And we don't want it to do that. We want it to make sure that it only outputs power when the shulker box is completely full. So to do that, we're going to leave this redstone block here. We're actually going to have the comparator output into a solid block with a piece of redstone dust underneath it. The comparator is going to be placed on top of an observer that's reading what happens to this redstone dust, and the observer is going to output into a dispenser. So dispenser in the floor here, that's where the shulker boxes are going to go. Observer detecting this redstone dust and outputting into the dispenser, comparator on top of the observer right there. Then we're going to place a solid block on top of this, a solid block right here, and a repeater facing into the piston that's going to be breaking the shulker boxes. Repeater facing into that piston and only set to one tick, so no delay on this repeater whatsoever. And of course our input mechanism is going to be a series of hoppers that are going to run down from the top here, just to make sure that they can feed contents into the top of the shulker box. And I just realized the comparator is facing the wrong way, so we do need to fix that. The comparator needs to be detecting the contents of the shulker box and facing outwards into this block of andesite here. That's my mistake. So we're going to take some items out of this shulker box here. We're just going to remove some of the glow lichen and put it into the input hoppers at the top here, so that the shulker box here isn't full and we're going to put any empty shulker boxes that we want to load up later into this dispenser so that they'll receive any more items once the first box gets broken. We're going to put our first input shulker box right here, that's the one with all of the ender pearls and glow lichen in it already. And once again we need to bear in mind that this system is automatic and it's designed for the shulker box to fill up completely with all 24 slots because we can't right click on it to open it right now and take a look at its contents. The only way you could look at the contents of this shulker box would be if you were in spectacular mode and this is a survival world and we don't have spectator mode available to us. So if I now put the glow lichen into this input hopper it's slowly going to filter down into the shulker box and once that all disappears all of the stacks of the shulker box are going to be full. The comparator is going to activate, it will read that the signal strength is full, and there we go. It swaps the shulker boxes over, pushing the full shulker box into the hopper which feeds into this chest, and replacing it with an empty shulker box ready to receive items. Like I said, this is just one circuit that you can use for shulker box loading like this. This may not be the most compact design out there, but it's pretty reliable and it will get the job done 
if you want to build one of these into a wool farm or an ink farm if you've got one of those for farming squid or basically any other farm you want to the cactus farm here even as long as we can guarantee that every item is going to fill up to a full stack inside the shulker box we can use this system to automatically load up full shulker boxes and output them into a chest ready to collect later and naturally the circuit isn't going to do anything here in our testing grounds but i think we're going to use it plenty of times in future builds and folks that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide i hope you've enjoyed this look at shulker box loading and unloading it's a really useful mechanic and i hope you'll make good use of it in your own worlds thanks so much for watching my name has been pixel riffs don't forget to leave a like on this video if you've enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you folks soon take care bye for now